What's up, YouTube? What's up, Divas and Divas? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So, you guys, I probably look a little bit crazy right now. Like, not really crazy. Like, my makeup look good, though. So, I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? But my hair probably look crazy. Let me tell y'all real quick. Okay? Let me just... let me, Girl, let me tell y'all. Okay? So, I was doing this half-week video, okay? And, um... I had did the half week video a few days ago, actually, honestly. I had did it like a few days ago, like about five, six days ago. So I was about to go and edit it, okay? And then I looked at the video footage of me with the half wig on. Girl, why did I look like somebody that was in the Martin Luther King march? Like, for real? <laughs> that That wig, like, I don't know how the hell... I did not notice while on camera and on in the mirror because it just looked totally different when I looked at it on a video. Like, I know I need glasses and I, I mean, I can't see, but damn, my bitch ain't blind. Okay. So when I looked at the video, um, hopefully I remember to put the clip in here for you guys, but I'll definitely show you in the video what it looked like on um, for Thursday. But, um, when I looked at the video, I was like looking and I just, Maybe I kept fast forwarding it to the, and then I went to the next clip because I felt like maybe that's a clip that I could just like, like not show because maybe it was just the way my hair was turned and maybe my hair wasn't style yet. So let me just fast forward and then let me just fast forward to the next clip. And then let me, just, let me tell y'all, I went through like four clips and it all looked like I was like at the Martin Luther King March. Okay. Like for real. You know how, okay, so the wig is called Boss Lady, and it's by Sensational. And it's a very textured wig. It's textured, you know, it's supposed to be, like, kind of, like, mimic African-American hair that's blown out. You know what I mean? But natural state, like, it's not hair like my texture hair because my hair is fine. And, you know what I'm saying? I wish I did. I didn't have a curl pattern. I don't know which one it is. Okay? But, um, and if y'all know, let me know. But it was more or less like, you know... Um, it looked like kinky straight hair, but a little bit more poofier and it had like a curl at the end. It was like right here. So when I, um, and like, you know, like, it, you know, um, like, so I tried to keep my hair from flat ironing it so that it, you know, figuring like the frizz in my hair or something like the black in me would come out and it would like blend in with that wig girl listen so then today i was like fuck it i'm gonna just do the video over i'm gonna try something different so that way i don't have to really blend it too much so i did do something different and it ended up being like more or less like a hairstyle for like preteens, you know like 12 and 13 who want to wear a wig but you know you still have to keep it young and girly like so you know or young just young in general so you know you might have somewhere to go with the kid you gotta put them on a half wig you don't want them to look all adult-like, but you still want to give them that kid vibe. So, yeah, I did that. And let me tell you, I was not about to wear the wig, the half wig on the video today for Real Talk, even though I switched it up and I did it in like a ponytail type kind of like type of thing, kind of like thing. But it still kind of looked like my daughter was like, you look like toddlers and tiaras. Like, you know, like I don't really want to look like, hold on, turn this light down. Like, I don't really want to look like I um, should be on toddlers and tiaras, okay? But the hairstyle was more catered for younger people. And the reason why I still had the half wigs on is because, you know, I had to pick them up from school. So it's either I come out there with nothing on, but I was already running late, or I just don't pick you up, or I come in, come out looking like toddlers and tiaras. So, you know. So you guys see that video, but um, that was my day. And let me tell y'all something. It took me all day. It is now 4.58 p.m. Normally, I'm done doing real talk videos, but I don't know what happened with today. I honestly don't even know. So other than that, you know, my week has gone fine. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all something. So remember last week when I was talking and I was telling you guys, like, you know, I had made my move, not made my move, but I had had my um I had put my foot down well not even put my foot down but on the first of January I had told you guys um last week I told you that on the first of January that you know I did have a talk with my two eldest kids and I did like kind of like a reminder update of the situation here you know at my home basically you know telling them like you know you have to xyz amount of time and um well basically to my daughter and um you know, I did um, reiterate that uh, a couple of days ago, 
like a few days after I showed you guys last week's video. Um, listen, you know what? Here's the thing. As a parent, it is so hard to be a parent. Like nobody is a perfect parent. And like we struggle with a lot of shit in life. It don't even have to necessarily be financial shit. But I have noticed like, you know, basically I had to start up the conversation because I was kind of like irritated already because, you know, I, um, I was just irritated with the, the way that this house is like the way that they're running their lives. So not my two youngest. So, and, um, you know, I had to bring them in back and have a seat with them. Now, mind you, my son was has been doing really, really good. He, um, he still works at Walmart. He went back to the night shift. So he makes good money, um, for somebody who's 20 years old. He pays me his rent money. You know what I'm saying? He pay to make sure that he does what he's supposed to do. He goes to his probation. He's been doing really good. He doesn't smoke weed like that anymore. He doesn't drink at all anymore because he wasn't supposed to be drinking in the first place. That's the problem that I was having with him. So anyway, you know, he has changed. He started cleaning up his room. He starts doing a lot more things. And this has been going on for some months and months now. So I'm really proud of him. So, you know, he did say he was going to move out, but um, he's not moving out at the end of this month. You know, he is going to wait. And I gave him that alternative to wait, you know what I mean? Because he has been, he's been, he's been doing good. And he's never really been disrespectful to me. He's never been disrespectful to me. He does dumb shit, but he's never been disrespectful to me ever. So anyway, you know, um, but sometimes he does dumb shit. Like, you know, you'll spend all your money up when you get paid and then want to borrow from me. Can't do that. You got to hold on to something. But, you know, that's a kid. Um, but, you know, with her, you know, it's more or less like this. Um, you know, she doesn't do anything. When I say she doesn't do anything, she doesn't do anything around here. Her room is disgusting. Um, her attitude is like, you know, I could care less. Um, I'm going to figure it out, you know, because that's what she says to me. I'm going to figure it out. So anyway, um, I, I, re I reiterated the um, conversation that we had. And I brought everybody into the living room because I don't want to exclude anybody. I don't want you to feel like I'm pointing the finger at you. But I guess it kind of turned out to be like that, you know what I'm saying? Because it was just like, you know what I'm saying? And when you're a kid and you live with your mom, regardless, you're always going to be a kid to me because you're my kid. But when you live with your parents, you, who the fuck are you to be disrespectful? To me, being disrespectful is not doing shit around the house. Not just, you know what I'm saying? It's, it runs deep. And, um, you know, I have to let her know, like, listen, you've been the main one taking advantage of me and using me. How's that? How is that? You don't get off your ass to clean up. You don't um, pay for anything. You haven't paid for anything in five months. You barely take care of your son. You, you sleep in the bed. You lay in the bed all day. Don't do shit. And while he went around, like, it was just, like, a whole big thing. It wasn't even an argument, but, you know, I don't like people to cut me off. So, you know, I had to, like, put my stern, you you know what, you know what time it is, voice down. And so, you know what I'm saying? I had to do that. And basically, I had to let her know, like, listen, I'm only giving you two-week extension in, in February. So, in the middle of February, you have to be gone. You think that I'm a joke. You think that everything that I done said to you and I told you about the leave and the move out was a joke. Because if you didn't think it was a joke, you would be looking for a real job. Okay. You would be looking for a partner. You would have been, been doing a lot of things already. So the five months that you did not pay me and you had money, you was, you was working, you should have held on to that shit. But it's not my problem. Like I said, you think I'm a joke and you think this is a joke. And it's not. I said, parents... Sometimes you have to put your kids out. And though we don't want to, sometimes you have to put them out because that's going to allow them to grow and, and be more responsible. As long as you stay here in my house, you stagnated. And that's my problem. And I'm the one that's enabling you, okay? And I'm not trying to be no codependent. But you, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's time for you to go. I, I hope you don't think that it was a joke because it seems like everything that I've been saying to you for the past two and a half years has been a joke. So, you know, like I said, son, you need to get a job, you need to get a real job. I've been, I, you know, I get a job. I've been, I've been, um, in, on interviews for, for like two, I said, well, that was two years ago. You're not talking about the past. That's invalid. Your, your excuses right now are not valid. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, long story short, you know, I have to put my foot down. Long story shorter, today is Tuesday. Okay. By the time y'all see this, it'd be Wednesday. So this must have been on Sunday. This was Sunday that I had the conversation with him. He please tell me why, um, you know, everybody walked off fine, except for my daughter, eldest daughter. She had an attitude. 
and she hasn't spoken to me in two days. Oh, oh, maybe you say two and a half. Okay, by the time y'all see this, it'll be three. Yeah, y'all probably like, what do you mean she hasn't spoken to you? What I mean is this, bitches. Now, any other time you see me in the house, you speaking to me. Good morning, honey. Blah blah blah. Hey, how you doing? What's up, mommy? Etc. You done seen me sit in that same spot like I've been sitting all the time. You done seen me enough times in this house. You didn't say a goddamn word to me. And trust me when I tell you, bitch, I'm not about to say nothing to you. I have already said something to my mother about it and to my husband about it and to my kids about it. And, you know, my husband is more or less like, you know, that probably bothers you. No, it does not fucking bother me. You know why it does not bother me? If you don't want to speak to me, you don't have to motherfucking speak to me. Do you think I really give two shits if you don't speak to me? You mad because I'm telling you the truth about how you are and what you need to do with yourself? You can't get mad. You in your feelings. What you need to do is get it together. But who would I be if I didn't say anything to you about it? So you walk around here and you're not speaking to me. You think that I'm on dire's knee for a conversation? No. Here is the thing, sweetheart. I could be on some real petty shit and tell you since you don't want to speak to me and you, you know what I'm saying, and you in my home and you ain't did shit for me, you ain't did shit, uh, you can leave since you don't want to conversate. But I'm not going to be that petty. I'm going to be the bigger adult in this and I'm just going to not care. I, here's the thing with kids, your, your own kids. They feel like when they do something to you, it's supposed to hurt your feelings. You're supposed to be really like, hurt over the shit like let me tell you something this ain't the first time that you wasn't speaking to me ain't the second or the third and honey i guarantee you it won't be the last i have been i have put up with enough shit and that's just what i had to say to him i have put up with more than enough shit okay to the point where it's like listen honey like i had to come through like a motherfucking storm on sunday and say like i came through like i was a motherfucking storm I'm not putting up with nobody's shit no more. I don't give a fuck how you feel. You can be in your feelings. This is how it is. And this is what you want to do. And then if you don't like it, there's the door goodbye. Because if you let somebody, anybody walk on you, they will walk all over you like they the motherfucking marching band. I have been so patient and nice. I try to spare feelings because I don't really like to go around hurting anybody's feelings. I don't like to go around hurting people's feelings. I don't like to make you feel bad about yourself. I don't make I don't I don't like for you to feel sad or upset. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to see you cry. But it comes a time and a place where if you're telling somebody something like 15 times and they still not getting it, then what the fuck am I supposed to do? You know what? This is what it's about to be. And if you don't like it, then I'm sorry. But I've given you I've given you umpteen a million times chances and you still just slacking. So therefore, this one is on you, sweetheart. And you can blame nobody but yourself. And if you continue to not want to speak to me, then remember that when you need something. So that's where I'm at on that shit. And you know something? It's like this, like I said. Well, other than that, we're going to get into this real talk. This is going to be one because it's kind of long. And I did promise Mumsy and Nay that we would go get something to eat. Like, I mean, we have food here, but... You know, I wanted to take him to the Chinese buffet. If y'all are wondering about my hair, this one, this is my old wig. This is best lace wigs, lace front wig. And I just threw it on because, listen, I didn't want y'all to see me in that stupid looking ponytail. Like, it didn't look stupid, but I looked, looked stupid in it because I'm too old for that. And my head is long. So I just took this off the mannequin and kind of like gel, didn't even gel it down. I just put a piece of gel here and here with some got to be clear gel. And let me tell you, it's on. This is crazy, though, that it's so tight, and I didn't even put no gel like that, like a couple dots, but whatever. So, you guys, let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you would like me to talk about, you know, let me spill some tea. You can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. If you want to change, oh, make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the names of the people that you are mentioning or talking about, you don't want nobody to know who you are in the video, uh, you can go ahead and say that you changed your names. If you don't do that, then 99.9% .9 of the time, baby daddies. <laughs> Baby, I'm going to change the name for you guys. Like, for real. Like, you know how Maury come out with 99.9? 99.9 9 times, baby daddies, I'm going to change the names for you. So, let's get into this real talk. Huh? 
All right, you guys. So, hey, April. Um, I love all your hair and makeup videos, and I really enjoy your real talk videos. I know you hear so many times uh, people say that you crack them up because I guess I'm funny. Okay. Well, I just have to say it again. You crack me up with your expressions and imitations of how people are ninjas would talk and the things that they would say. You are so funny and true with what you say a lot of times. Well, thank you, girl. I've uh, been told I've been funny. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know how, but that's just me. Especially, and she's going to go on to tell me, especially the time you said during a real talk that um, some guy was jealous and angry and he had asked, why is your tank so long? Your gas, your gas tank so long. Not about me, but about a story in the real talk. And where did you go for the day? Um, so basically, I changed the voices in the video and changed the lighting and stuff. She was like, girl, I was cracking the fuck up at the voice you put on and your expression and imitation of the dude you were describing. Because that is some of the things that some of these type of ninjas would say, basically. So he was just basically trying to ask his girlfriend, why is her gas tank a little bit lower? Um, and in that video, I did change the color of my skin, like the color of the screen and the voices, you know, because I was doing a reenactment. I was him, you know what I'm saying? Because of the dumb shit that he was asking him. So I appreciate the fact, girl, that you think I'm funny. You know, it's always good to laugh. You, laughing is healthy. So if I make you laugh, then that's what's up. Because then I know that I have put a smile on your face for the day. So she says, I look forward to watching your next episodes. And I've tried the concealer and then the shadow method like you showed us. And it works great. Lasts all day. So um, I, I, I don't think she meant the shadow. She meant the powder um, for your lace. Because a lot of times we be putting just the face powder on our, our wigs. That shit don't work. You know what I'm saying? If you just put face powder on your lace wig, it's going gonna, it's gonna to disappear. It's powder. So what I do is I put the powder on first. And then I put on like a liquid concealer or foundation. And that way it'll stay on all day. You know what I'm saying? So just keep that in mind. Um, and last all day, I love you for being real. And I love your sense of humor. I also bought, um, I also bought, um, a lace front. Um, oh, I also bought many lace front wigs because of you. You always look beautiful. Keep up the good work. Well, I'm glad that I'm your inspiration girl for going broke. Bitch, if you're going broke, yes, blame it on me. Okay. I'm saying. Um, now for this real talk, she says. I would like to ask your opinion on what you think that I should do to these hater managers on my job who are female and why these females are so envious just um, just because I'm working, uh, excuse me, and why these females are so envious of me just existing on the job and try to diminish anything good that I do and overlook it and I overlook it just so they don't have to acknowledge me. These females never even speak to me. Um, I come into work and they never give any um, acknowledgement. They never gave me any training, yet they know, yet they always go around telling people that I don't know what I'm doing, which is not true. And it causes the other workers to hate on me too. I believe that she had it out for me, the person at her job. We're going to just call her Melody. I believe that Melody had it out for me because I originally applied to the seafood department, but she hired me as a cashier. And... Melody has a problem with me because I politely and respectfully spoke up to have my cashier position switch to the original seafood position. I have worked um, because I've already worked as a cashier and I don't like working with anyone's money. There's a lot of people that's like that. I would rather work with fish and shrimp than deal with other people's money. Also, she has a good point because you don't want your shit coming up short. So I can totally agree with her. In the past, when I did work as a teller, my coworker was stealing and blaming it on me. As the new teller at that time, um, she almost made it work out for her. She almost made me get in trouble. I never stole anything from anybody ever, but it is my first, it is my reason for not work, wanting to. Oh, but it is my reason for not wanting to work as a cashier now. But the manager here hates me. And treats me mean because I politely voiced my opinion. She also asked me, um, why am I so hostile? Um, and excuse me, what? She also makes it a very hostile working environment by telling others that I have spoken to her. What? I, okay, hold on. 
I just got to be worth this. She also makes it a very hostile work environment by telling all of my coworkers what I have spoken to her about in private. This causes them to treat me very harshly just to please her. Then she set me up and had me fired by saying that I failed to give some customer her correct change of $3. And she said that this female customer came over to the customer service desk and reported it, um, reported me. She then had me, she then had me come she didn't have me come to the back office, um, which was full of other coworkers, and had this other woman who also disliked me, though she didn't even know me, count my drawer. And then she said that my drawer came up $20 short. And for this reason, she had to let me go and fire me. Now, I have always been an honest person. I have never had any problems with any customers, nor has any customer ever complained to me that I didn't give her her correct change. My drawer had never come up short before, and I had the front end manager to come and do a cash pickup from my drawer. And she caught me as I was just finishing up with giving my last customer his change and receipt. Then she rushed over, when she rushed over to now get the cash out of my drawer to give to the other cashier who was stationed next to me and put it in his drawer and never took out the cash room like she was supposed to do. So basically she came and counted her drawer um, before she was giving her customer the change and somehow it got, you know, like crazy. What do you want? Um, instead, she took over $400 from my drawer with, she took, instead she took over $400 from my drawer without doing the procedure that is specifically made for when a manager takes cash from your drawer, which would give you a receipt of proof. I immediately said, wait, now I need my change and my receipt for this transaction. Because she has allowed me the chance to punch in the correct procedure, it would have brought up the correct screen that would then ask her to identify herself by asking her to punch in her employee numbers. It would have also asked her to punch in the amount of money that she is taking from my drawer. And at what and then and at what time she was taking that money from my drawer and it would have printed out two receipts. One receipt would be for her and the other for me. Um, and this would be my proof. But she bullied me with her hard managerial managerial position and played and playing off at the fact that I was mean and all that the manager had told everybody about me, and she intentionally skipped doing this procedure so basically her manager skipped the whole entire procedure where the receipts would have printed out once she went and cat caught got the money from the drawer i believe at this time that she stole from my drawer to make my drawer come up short she also then immediately sent me on a 15 minute break stating that she would give me my change and my receipts once i came back from break when i never received anything from her the manager who was a brown skinned female which all of them were and I just happened to be a light-skinned female, and they were all attacking me and trying to make it look like that when I said that I wanted to speak to someone else about this incident of being fired because I believe that I was set up. They tried to make it look as though it was all in my head when it was not. I was never even given a tour around the store when I was first hired. I believe that they didn't want me to stick um, to stay um, stick up for myself or they didn't feel like I should be on a job as a cashier because they were prejudiced against light-skinned black women. I was the only light-skinned black woman who worked there. There was a Spanish woman that worked there, but she was obviously Spanish with an accent, which is um, beautiful. I have no problem with anyone. But this manager had influenced the rest of the staff not to like me, and I did nothing wrong to anyone. I wanted to ask you, what is your opinion about this? Do you think that I was set up? Have you ever been hated on by a browner woman that are, um, that are black as we are too? yet they hate you because you are of a lighter skin tone. And what do you think I should do? I'm sorry if this story is so long. If this makes it to real talk, you may shorten it your way. If it's easy, you may call me Maya. That is my change name. So she just tells me her name is Maya now. Okay, so anyway. Um, Candy? Oh, you're right there. So anyway, um, basically Maya is saying this because I was getting a little bit confused for the whole fucking thing. I was about to just cut it short and be like, you know what? Let me just move on to the next one. But, um, I got through it and I'm going to sum it up for you guys real quick because she was kind of like all over the place with, um, not really all over the place, but you know, she was basically telling me word for word for word for word. Okay. But it was kind of like, I know it was encrypted. It was like encrypted. It was like a spy. 
kind of thing. So basically, Maya had, is light-skinned. We get that. And she works for somewhere where there's a lot of brown-skinned people, a lot of brown-skinned black people. Like us light-skinned people, there are some brown-skinned black people, okay? So basically, Maya's the only light-skinned one. And from what I see, there's a Spanish person that works there. And then there are brown-skinned women that work there. So at least that some minorities are working there. At least they get that. So I'm the part that I'm confused about is this. She didn't want to work as a cashier. So, you know, she said, and she spoke her piece about it. The person didn't like her for that. Um, she wanted to be back there in the seafood section because she already had an issue as being a teller or cashier because someone stole from her drawer. So I'm not really sure if she's at this job now because from what I was taking from it, that's what I'm saying. It's all over the place. She said that um, she just never wanted to be a cashier and she wanted to be in the back part. Listen, let me tell you, we're going to skip all of that. Do I think you will set up? First of all, here's the thing. There are procedures that you need to follow at any place, at any any type of workplace. You know what I'm saying? Each job, each job has their own procedures and policies. That's how a job is ran. If you didn't have that shit, then it'd be a problem. If that bitch, if your manager, that bitch, did not follow procedure correctly, then what you need to do is you need to take it to the human resource department, pretty hard. Don't sit around letting these bitches haggle you and finagle you and bully you and treat you like shit and talk to you like shit. Um, it doesn't matter where you're at, at any job, any school, any place, what are you doing? But I tell you what, have I ever had anybody that was brown skin or darker complexion dislike me or hate on me because I'm light skin? You know something? To be honest, I can't really say that I've been hated on because of my skin complexion. You know what I mean? I have never had anybody of a darker skin complexion that is black, African-American, say to me that, you know, I don't like you because you light skin or, you know what I'm saying? I've never had those issues, but, um, you know, I get along with everybody unless you, you stir me wrong. You know what I'm saying? I don't really care what color your skin is as long as we cool, you know what I'm saying? And you respect me and I respect you, then we good. But I've never had, um, anyone personally tell me that they didn't like me or someone else tell me that they hate on me because I'm light skin. Um, I do, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I do notice certain things and like, I don't really notice it so much now because listen, let me tell y'all, I'm 44 years old. Ain't nobody about to stir me wrong. Look at me crazy in my face because of my skin complexion. I don't give a fuck who you are, what race you are, but I do notice it sometimes now. So have I ever been hated on because I was light skinned? Not blatantly, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I really can't tell you, but if you want to, if you want to basically say that, you know, I have been punked or are bullied or tried to have been bullied by someone of a darker skin, then yes, I have. Um, and that's like what a given. Um, I'm not saying that they did it because they're darker skin complexion because I don't even know. You know, kids are kids and teenagers are teenagers. They're still considered kids. You know what I'm saying? So in my young adult life, my young adulthood, my teenage years, my preteen years, you know what I'm saying? I have been like um bullied not even bullied up uh, because that's not even the right word bullied is when they constantly do it to you but i have been i don't know what's the right word but you know i have had females that are darker than me look at me roll their eyes try to say smart shit to me you know i've, I've had that like you know what i'm saying and i've i've just thought about it like bitch who the fuck you think you are you know what i'm saying and I, i've had those issues as a teenager you know what i'm saying as a young adult i've had those issues and I'm not really sure if it's a light-skinned thing or, you know, maybe they don't even know that I'm black. Sometimes people don't know that I'm black and they think that me, they, they think of me as like a different race. Like, you know, I have lots of people asking me, well, what are you? Like, who the fuck asked somebody that? What are you? Well, what are you? Bitch, what the fuck does it look like I am? I'm a fucking human being. What the fuck does it matter what I am? But, you know, I have gotten that a lot from people, people of my own race that say, that's just my dog playing. Um, what are you? You know what I'm saying? People of my own race have said to me, what are you? So obviously it's not like, um, I don't really know if it's always a black thing. Um, I don't know, but you know, as a, as a teenager, as growing up, you know, as a teenager, grow as a teenager growing up and as a young adult growing up, you know, I, I got tired a lot of people asking me, what am I? What is my race? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got tired of that shit. I really did. Um, you know, 
it didn't really bother me so much as a kid, but as I got older, like in my twenties, that's when it really started to irritate me because you know I'm more mature. I'm an adult, so it's like, why the fuck are you asking me what am I, what race am I? Why would you even ask somebody something like that? You know, what I'm saying like, damn, y'all balls. Um, I never forget this one time. Um, I never forget this, and I think I told you guys this. I might have shared this with you guys before. I'm not really sure, but. A long time ago, this was a long time ago, it's probably like 25 years ago, um, I was at a shelter, and it was me, it was like, yeah, it was me, my son, and, what are you doing? She is really loving that bear. We was playing, um, you should playing with that bear. It was me, my son, and my daughter, and we was at a shelter. And um, it was a domestic violence shelter, this was before my husband. And um, I'll never forget, you know, it's just women and children, women and children, for the women and children, it's a domestic violence shelter. And, um, you know, there was a white lady, I think she was white, or she might have been mixed with something, I'm not really sure, she, whatever the case may be, I'll never forget, she asked me, what was I? You know, we was at the table, we was cleaning, because we had just finished eating dinner, and, you know, we each have chores, so, you know, we was cleaning, I was cleaning the kitchen, and she was in there too, and I was cleaning up the table, I'll never forget this. And she asked me, what are you? And I said, excuse me? And she said, what are you? I said, I'm black. You know what I'm saying? And she said, no, you're not. And I said, excuse me? And now, listen, I already left a hostile environment because I'm in a domestic violence shelter. So I already left a hostile environment, okay? And I'm already there with kind of like a hostile attitude because I'm not in my home. I have to be in a domestic violence shelter. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it kind of like caught me off guard she basically was like, no, you're not. And I was like, excuse me? She was like, well, you don't look black. Um, Look at your hair. And, and at the time, I wasn't even wearing wigs. Look at your hair. Look at your skin complexion and your freckles. So I'm just like looking at her like, so you're going to sit here and tell me. And I remember, you're going to stand here and tell me that I'm not black? Who the fuck are you to tell me that I'm not black? So we kind of got into like a verbal argument. And then one of the staff had to kind of like come in between us. Because I was ready to fly that bitch head. Who the fuck is you to tell me that I'm not black? Bitch, who is you? So, you know, saying that kind of offended me. And, you know, as I got just a little bit older, I, I just got tired of it. Like, basically, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody comes, people of all race come in all different skin complexions. So, you know what I'm saying? I may not be 100% black, okay? But I'm motherfucking black. And, um... As I got older, like, you know, I was still in my 20s, I did start noticing, like, side eyes from, like, darker women are, are, of my complexion. And I'm not sure if it was because I was with my husband who was dark-skinned, and they probably didn't think that I was a black woman. Did you ever see, like, a, a couple, like, an interracial couple? Um, some people just don't like interracial couples. And that's that's okay, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has a preference. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. However, it's a way that you go about voicing your opinion. Sometimes you don't supposed to even voice that shit. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, take my dad, for instance. My dad, um, my mom was the only black woman that he's ever dated and had kids with. Everybody else is a different race, you know what I'm saying? But um, people would shun that and they would look down. You know, I've, I've seen black women look at interracial couples and in one of the... The people in the interracial relationship was a black man, and he could have been with a white woman, he could have been with a Chinese woman, whatever. I have seen them look at them like real nasty, like, you know what I'm saying? And I have heard like people say to like my husband, Oh, I seen you. Who was that white girl you was with? Yeah, I was at such and such. And you talking about me, like, so you thought that was a white girl, and it's not. I am a black girl. So I don't really know if the side eyes that I was getting from darker um, black women or just darker brown, or darker skin, darker toned women that are in the black community, I don't know if that side eye was like looking at me like, oh, I don't like you because you're light skin, or I don't like you because you white and you with a black man, even though I'm not white. You know what I'm saying? So I have gotten like many stares. I I, I get it. I still get it. I get stares. You know what I'm saying? I get like the side eye, the nasty look. Even to this day, I'm not really sure what it is, but I think like, okay, let's take, for example, like as a teenager, like I said, you know, I get the side eye, 
dark skinned girls or brown skinned girls will try to step to me. And I don't know if it's because y'all think that I'm white and I'm like, you know, scary or it's because I'm light skinned and y'all think that I'm scary. So, you know, that sometimes I used to take it as such, like, you know, maybe she don't like me because she think I'm white and I'm with this black man. Or maybe they don't like me because of this. I don't know. It's it's just like a whole different type of feeling. And I really can't explain it. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, some people do think that I'm white when they see me from a distance. Like, I don't know how you would take it if you see me in person. People see me in person and they think that I am Spanish. Not Mexican, but Puerto Rican. Um, I don't know. Like, I've never really, like, went up to somebody and said to them, what do you think that I am? But, you know, like. For, for one, let's just get this out the book. It's already hard being a black person in America, okay? So it sucks when you got your own fucking people, regardless of what skin tone they are, but they your own fucking people talking shit and treating you like shit because you are a lighter color. You know what I'm saying? Like, that sucks. It's already hard enough being a black person. It's already hard enough sometimes being a woman. And it's already hard enough sometimes just being human in general. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really like go I don't really be bothered with like a lot of the color skin shit and I don't really tolerate it but there is a fine line between work and non-work ethics and if you at work and you feel like they really set you the fuck up girl let me tell you you need to go ahead to a higher up because that bitch is just a manager of that store she ain't no fucking owner she ain't the hiring motherfucker she ain't the ceo she ain't corporate you need to go to the HR or to the corporate and let them know, listen, this is what happened and this is how it went down. I'm pretty sure that there's video footage, okay, because damn near every store has video. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's video footage showcasing her and not giving you the receipts and all of that good stuff. I'm pretty sure there is. And if there is video footage or if there's video cameras, I would definitely tell them, listen, can you please roll back the tape and look at it? Do I think they set you up? Um, hmm, if nobody is liking you, sweetheart, and they all have an issue with you because of the manager, for one, that's really not a great work environment for you. However, you ain't going here to make friends neither, because that's what I tell people all the time. Bitch, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to get a paycheck, which I could care less about what you do on the weekends or after five. That's not my concern. No, you cannot have my number unless it's work related. You know what I'm saying? So when you go to work, you go there to work. That's why it's called work. You know what I'm saying? Not to make friends. This ain't like daycare or play date. It's to work. You know what I'm saying? But as far as me being light skinned and shit, like, okay, so like, yeah, I've heard like many different things. Like, even like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when we go into a store, when you go into like the store, any kind of store, me and my husband, they will always kind of like look at him strange and be like, can I help you with something? You know what I'm saying? And he will always say to me, they'll never say nothing to you. They don't never treat you like that because you light skin. They probably think you white. Um, I'm glad I, you know what I'm saying? He say he would say stuff like that. He wasn't mean it in a mean way, but he was joking. And, you know, I have noticed that, like, I don't really get bothered. But when I'm with somebody, um, like, that's a darker complexion, then it's an issue. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have seen even in stores, in the stores, how they treat darker skin tone African-American women versus lighter skin tone african-american women it seems like they always following them and always think that they're gonna take some shit why my light skin ass might be the thief you know what i'm saying like my light skin ass might be the thief her ass might not be the one stealing okay keep the attention on her because my light skin ass gonna steal everything up in here so you know what i'm saying it does suck it does suck because it's like a stereotype thing um do i feel like um females don't like me because i'm light skin i don't really know you know what i'm saying like if they was to say it to my face, basically, like, listen, I don't like you because you're light skin. Then I would definitely know. But, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I notice little things, you know, I I just, but it doesn't really bother me as much as it used to. You know, like I said, I've, I've gotten all the stares. I have gotten many people ask me, why, um, why are you so light? What, what are you? Um, why do you have freckles? Um, black people don't have freckles. Black people have freckles. Okay. Um, you can't be black because look at your hair texture. Black people have all different types of hair texture. You know what I'm saying? Well, your features are white. Black people have all types of features. Okay. For me, it's like this. Like, I have noticed, I have noticed it throughout my life. I have noticed how dark skin or brown skin women treat me. 
And that's not all of them. You know what I'm saying? That's just the petty ones. I even noticed it with the white ladies too, okay? Or the motherfucking Asians, okay? Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, but still to this day, I still, you know what I'm saying? I do get the stairs, like, you know, the look up and down or whatever, like, and I don't really, I don't really know if it's because I'm light skin and you feel like because I'm light skin, you can like intimidate me or whatever. You cannot, you can never feel like skin color is a valid reason to intimidate somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like it's because that girl is white don't mean that she can't whip your ass. Don't talk to her like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't a girl that I was cool with. It was just in an environment, you know what I'm saying, with my cousin, you know, my cousin. So the one that went to New York with me, her. So I could watch her mentality and I could see the way she think that, you know, because you of this color that you can't fight or you won't be the one that I'm going to antagonize right now. So we was together and this was the last incident. You know, I did say it was a year ago. And um, we was together in October of last year and she just started going off with this white girl. Like, you know, I already told you guys she was embarrassing me and she was side-eyeing me and she was side-eyeing everybody else. But I noticed that she didn't get mouthy with me or, you know what I'm saying? But she just like, kind of like went off on the white girl for no reason. Like, cause the white girl had like, kind of like looked at her kind of like, you know, she might've been admiring something she had on. Just because somebody looks at you does not give you the reason to be mean and nasty. My mother and grandfather used to always say, how you know I'm looking at you if you ain't looking at me? Right? You know what I'm saying? So she kind of like glanced at my cousin. And maybe she had on, what do you got in your mouth? Maybe she had, give me my cat back. Give me that. Give. Maybe she had on something that my cousin liked. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I remember, i never forget my cousin. You know, she basically, the girl looked at her and glanced and then my cousin and her nasty mouth and attitude was basically like what the fuck you looking at all in my face oh my god all these people always staring at somebody like and i felt so embarrassed like i don't like to be embarrassed okay but the girl walked off i'm still with her she's still running her mouth and this is not the first time that she's done that during that visit that I was there in October. It's not the first incident. It also happened in the subway, you know, the sandwich place. Um, but yeah, she started going off on her and then she still was like going off to me about it. Like there was no reason to go off on the girl. She looked at you. She probably looked at me too. Who cares? Maybe she was wanting to know what, what, what the fuck was wrong with your face? Because, you know, she tried to tell me she was getting her teeth done. But, bitch, I know that nigga broke your jaw, okay? And you didn't get it fixed, and now it's hanging. But anyway, that's another story. So maybe she was looking at that. Either way, she just kept going off and off and off and off and off for, like, fucking five, ten minutes straight. And I was just like, oh, God, in my head, like, shut the fuck up. But then, you know what I'm saying? You get tired of it. So I turned around and looked at her and was like, you know what? Just because she white don't mean she can't fight. You know what I'm saying? What kind of minds? Just because she white don't mean she can't fight. You don't know that white girl from nowhere. She could whip your fucking ass. Don't think that she white and she can't fight. You crazy. You can't go around judging people because they skin color, because they can't, if they could fight or not. Who the fuck does that? But there are people that do it. And she was an example for, for what I'm about to say to you guys. Don't go around thinking that because I'm light skinned that you could punk me. Don't go around because she white thinking you could punk her. You could be standing there starting some shit with some little Asian woman or a little white woman. And you think she ain't going to whip your ass because she white or Asian or whatever the fuck she is. You know what I'm saying? You stand there rubbing your mouth because you, you know, you really badass. You of a different race. And you feel like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go off on this bitch because she white. And she just did something. She just, she just looked at me the wrong way. And then you get your ass whipped by that little white woman. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying, don't judge nobody by their skin color. Um, I have been judged, not even judged, but you know, yeah, I have gotten a side eye and I still get the side eye. Bitch, I don't know what the fuck you're looking at me for. I don't give a fuck. Sometimes I just, you know what I'm saying? As long as you ain't being disrespectful to me, then I'm good. Sometimes I don't even address it because, bitch, you're not even worth my motherfucking time. However, like I said, if you be disrespectful about it, then I'm definitely going to address it. Listen, as a person, as a human being, 
I think that we should stand together and support each other. It has nothing to do with skin color, but it does bother a person and it does hurt when your own race is kind of like against you because you may be a little bit different from them. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you're different. Yes. But here's the point. Bitch, if you got fired at your job for some fucking lame ass bitches that didn't do their job, honey, let me tell you something. I would definitely let somebody higher up know this is what what the fuck down and you can run a tape the fuck back. Don't even go in there and show your ass. Even if you don't want your job back, still make it a valid point. Still contact the HR and let them know what went down. So that way that bitch could get fired. You know what I'm saying? Like, get her ass fired. Even if you don't want to work for them no more, still make it a point to clear your name. Because your name is all you got, sweetheart. Where you going? You done jumped. Come here. Come here. She's really good. You know what I'm saying? Like, clear your name. Because your name is all that you have. Seriously. Like, your name is all you have. And I really feel like, even if you don't want your job anymore, you really need to at least go back to someone that's higher up and clear your name. You know what I'm saying? And let them know, this was not my fault. I'm not at fault for this. Because you want another job. You, you need another job. They're a reference. You don't want anything negative going on. You know what I'm saying? Your resume. You don't want any job having anything negative to say about you because somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Even if you don't want the job there still, I really feel like it's beneficial to you and it's really important to clear your name and let them know this is what happened and please watch the tape because I should not be held accountable for this. I'm giving you attention. You know what I'm saying? That's the most important thing. And as far as them fools, they a bunch of fools, a bunch of fools. You know what I'm saying? It's sad that women could gang up on another woman as a whole. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you got more than one person ganging up on somebody. Like, that's so pathetic. And then a lot of times people think like it's funny like to gang up and bully somebody. That shit ain't cool regardless of where the fuck you at, okay? You good because if it were me, I would probably spaz the fuck off. But you know what I'm saying? There's better ways to go on about it. And you know what I'm saying? My way of spazzing off probably wouldn't help the situation any better. But you know what I'm saying? What I would advise you to do is to definitely talk to somebody that's higher up because you need to clear your name. Fuck the job. Clear your name and let them know this is how it went down. So you guys, this light skinned girl, okay, is going to go. Make sure y'all check out tomorrow's video with that half wig. Okay. Real quick, guys, I wanted to share with you. I had to come back before I forgot. I wanted to share with you. But if you like to do yoga or work out, then there is a website or a brand called Simplicity. I think that's how you say it because it does look like it said. Um, I was gifted this product by Octoly um, from, a, from a brand called simplicity and they do specialize in yoga pants and palazzo pants and just like comfortable wear because they everything that i see they have is like really comfortable lounge type like you know lounge type of wear you know what i'm saying i got them in a size large i like palazzo pants because they're really comfortable and i was going to wear them for you guys and show you but when i tried them on they're really they don't run that small but so you know when something just fits and it's not the length that it needs to be so they're definitely a little bit too short because they're large Large one small but also I'm just gonna be honest with you guys and let you know that the fabric is kind of really cheap um you can see everything through these so you can see my hands you can see everything through these so as I put them on and I looked in the mirror not only can you see my underwear but you can actually see the print of my underwear through these um it's very see-through um i do know that leggings and palazzo pants sometimes they can be a little bit see-through but these are so sheer they're so three see-through that you know i wouldn't even feel comfortable wearing a long shirt over them because i would just feel like the shirt might rise up these are great for indoors like i would definitely wear these in the house and that's what i plan on doing with them but I just wouldn't wear them outside, but they do have a lot of other comfortable wear clothing, like shirts and, you know, other kind of pants. Girl, I like the elastic, okay? I like the elastic. So, you guys, I love you. Stay deep and delicious, and I'll see you guys soon.